The study of sound systems of languages, yes, and we said that the unit dealing with phonology is phoneme, which is a phonological segment, yes, that, that can be phonetically predicted, phonetically predicted now. Phonemes, phoneme is a phonological segment that according to phonetics, according to phonetics, we uh, predict, we describe the phoneme, okay? As shown here, be in bit and pe in pit. So, how can we distinguish that this is bit and this is pit? Yes? By the vibration. By the vibration, by the contrast between this phoneme, which is be, and the phoneme uh, pe. Yes. Then, as you see here, the organs of speech. <coughs> We have some so-called passive organs of speech and active. Passive organs of speech are the organs that we do not use always. They are not active. They are like the jaw, upper, the uh, lower jaw, the glottis, the pharynx, uvula, and the trachea. While the active, as shown here, The active like nose, upper teeth, alveolar edge, heart palates, and these things shown in this uh, diagram. Now we already started with the consonants. We defined consonants as, yes, yes please, yes. Received pronunciation, yes. So, so this is not the way, yes. So consonant sounds are those sounds produced with, yes please, with obstruction, constriction, obstacle, impediment, yes, to the air flow or the air stream. Now, we have subtypes of consonants, we have stops, Plosives, glides, and so on. Today we start with the plosives. With plosives. You have in the book plosives or what? Yes. Plosives? Yes. The last thing we did? Fricatives. Fricatives. Let's start with fricatives. Who can define fricatives? Fricative sounds. Yes. The air passing through narrow. Very good, yes, as shown here, made by moving two vocal organs together to restrict the release of sound. Now we have airflow releasing out of uh, the lungs. And this airflow is narrowed at some point. This airflow is narrowed at some point producing what is called fricative sounds. This group is fe, ve, se, ze, she, the, the, je, and so on. Let's start with the F or fe sound. Yes, you see this diagram? I don't know if this works. Yes, you see this tongue, tongue position, and then the upper teeth against the lower lip. Now you can do it. Can you do it now? Upper teeth against the lower lip? Yes? Fe. So is there any kind of voicing? How can we know that this is voiced and this is voiceless? 
by putting our fingers on the so-called Adam's apple and see whether, if the, whether there is vibration or not. If there is vibration, then? If there is vibration, voiced. If there is no vibration, now in case of fair, no, it means voiceless. Like in the word first, fair or phone, and now how about ve? Voiced, yes, like in video. Love and have. You see there is vibration in the vocal cords? Yes. Now this is the way, that, uh, the way how we produce it. The top front teeth, as in the diagram, are placed on the top of the bottom of the lip, the lower lip, okay? The sound is squeezed, you know, squeezed, okay? Through the small gaps, these sounds are known as, known as labio dental fricatives. So the point of articulation, the point, the place of articulation is labio dental. Labio dental. Yes. Now the other couple is the and the. The and the, as you see in the example here, the voice sounds found in the, their, father. Now again, the same parameters, the same criteria to describe uh, fricatives. First manner of articulation, which is fricative. Now point or place of articulation, let's try doing it. The, the. You see the position of the tongue? Yes. The tip of the tongue, yes. Raised to touch or comes between the upper and lower teeth. As in here in the diagram, we have the or the. Now, how can we know that it is voiced or not? Vibration. Now let's check if there is vibration with the. Is there? Check it, please. Check it, please. Check it like this. You feel it? You feel it? <coughs> yes, how about you? So, is it voiced or voiceless? Why? There is vibration. Now, how about the second one? The. The. The same point between or at or behind the upper teeth, which is called dental or interdental. Now, for in the case of the, it is voiceless, dental, fricative. Like in think, thin, thought, breath, and so on. Now here the way how we produce it, the tongue touches the teeth, usually just behind the front teeth above, is shown the way how we, these are known, these are known dental fricatives, okay? Now let's move to the third couple, which is she, je. Yes, you see, this is a black area of the uh, tongue. How it is raised in the back of the tongue. Who can, who can describe this? Yes, Elsis, please. Yes. Yes, the blade. The blade. Is this the blade? Back of the tongue. Okay. Yes. The back of the tongue is pushed against the roof, uh, the roof of the path. Let's see here, the sound share is made by raising the blade of the tongue uh, to, the, to, ma uh, to make light contact, light contact, narrowing, okay? 
with the soft palate, the sun squeezed through the gap, making she. Making she. Now, is there any vibration in the vocal cords? You feel it? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Yes, there is no vibration. Then, voiceless. Voiceless. Why? There is no vibration. Now, let's see. Je. Je. Yes? How come there is vibration in the vocal cords or vocal folds? The same point of articulation. Then we will have Plato. Plato. Yes? Plato. Alveolar. Plato. Alveolar. Fricatives. She. Voiceless. Plato. Alveolar. Fricative. Je, voiced, plato alveolar, fricative. Now, the third couple. Yes, the third couple. Se, ze. Se, ze. Yes. How we pronounce these, how we produce these two, cup, uh, two uh, sounds? Yes, point of articulation. Yes, the tip of the tongue move towards the tip of the tongue move the alveolar ridge, the alveolar ridge, okay? So the sound is made squeezing or narrowing like se, ze, narrowing, yes, narrowing. So only the tip of the tongue and the alveolar, there is no other organ of speech. Now let's start with C, as in C, voice, most, okay? Yes. Now, is there any kind of vibration to the vocal cord? So it means voiceless. Now, how about Z? Yes. How come you know whether it is voiced or not? Who can tell me? Who can tell me? Vocal cord. Can you do it here? Who can do it here? Can you do it from there? Yes. When I pronounce se, yes. I feel the vibration here. If there is a vibration to the vocal cords, then it is voiced. There is no not. There is no vibration. Voiceless. How about the se? Se. There is no vibration. It means, again, voiceless. Let's move to Z, as in zoo, has, freeze, cars, owns, and so on. It is also alveolar, alveolar, fricative. Is it voiced or voiceless? Voiced. How come? Because? There is vibration in the vocal cords, okay? Now, ha. Yes, this sound is created by raising the back, the back. Yes, the back of the tongue to lightly touch the soft palate area here, okay? Air from the lungs coming from the lungs. Yes, what's going on? Yes, please. Uh, it's pushed uh, uh, up past the glottis. And you know the glottis? The glottis is? Yes, glottis. The space, the gap, the opening between the two vocal cords. Okay? And there is air uh, pushed out, slightly pushed through this small gap making the hair and it is neither neither yes voiceless nor voice depending on the vowel coming after it depending on the uh, phonological context like here in hotel his behind you see this behind 
and hive. You know hive? And that's why we call it glottal, fricative. Is it voiced? Sometimes. Is it voiceless? Sometimes. Okay? This is the last one of these four plus one, four couples plus one uh, fricative sound. Quick recap. Fricatives. Fricatives. Fricatives mean? Yes? Through narrow, opening, making. Very good. And there are some uh, important facts, like they're called continuant in terms of generative phonology. Why continuant? Because when pronounced, when we produce these, when we produce these sounds, we can keep producing them, keep pronouncing them. Like if we have say, we can keep producing it continually, like s until the puff of air is finished, okay? Now, how about uh, these fricatives? How many are they? How many? There are four couples plus, yes, so they are? They are? Nine. Yes, can you repeat them? Yes, please, Zahra or, f yes? Yes, please. Yes, yes, Zahra here. Yes. And? And he, yes. Yes, let's start with fe, ve. Who can describe these two? Yes, please. Yes. Voiceless, this is in terms of voicing, whether voiced or good. How about a place of articulation or manner of articulation? Yes, this is called, this is called, yes, it is called labio dental. And then the manner of articulation? Fricative, good. How about V? V. Yes? Good. V? V? V, V. Check it out. Voiced, good. Place of articulation? Labiodental? Yes? V. The upper teeth against the lower lip? V. Labiodental? And fricative, okay, fricative. <laughs> now, let's move to second pair, which is she, uh, je, or se, ze. Se, ze, yes. Se, yes, se, voiceless, alveolar, yes. Yes, fricative, fricative. How about ze? Voiced, alveolar, good, and so on for the rest of these fricative sounds. Why, we say, why do we say sounds while they are phonemes of English? Why? Because as we mentioned first in the definition of the phoneme, that they are phonetically predicted. We use phonetics to describe these phonological phonemes, okay? Now, let's move to another subtype of consonants, which is affricates. Affricates, yes, please. Mm. Plosives or stops, yes? An and. As fricatives, very good, yes. Now, as shown here, they are made by making a complete closure at some point in the mouth, okay? 
similar to plosives. Complete, stop, closure, to the uh, point in the mouth, to the airstream, like in the plosive, like te, de, ke, and so on. And then, however, they differ as the air is released slower than uh, a plosive. We have only two, che, it's voice version, make a group, che and je, okay? They start with plosives or stops and end slowly releasing the airstream through fricatives. We have only two in English, che and je. Che is composed of Yes, it's composed of two, yes, one plosive, the other is fricative, plosive te plus fricative she. Te is te voiced or voiceless? Te, voiceless, good. How about she, we just described? She, voiced or voiceless? She, she. Voiceless. So, voiceless stop or plosive te plus voiceless fricative she gives voiceless, voiceless, yes, affricate che. Now, let's move to the point of, point of articulation to this combined um, phoneme. Now, see, for te, for te, the tip of the tongue, the tip of the tongue, yes, the tip of the tongue here for te, te, the tip of the tongue against, against, here, yes, alveolar edge. How about she, the blade? The blade of the tongue against, yes, the roof of the palate, the palate. Now, with the tip of the tongue and uh, al alveolar ridge, and then, yes, yes, please. And then the blade of the tongue with the palate, we will have what is called Plato. Yes, Plato, Plato, alveolar, affricate, che. Is it voiced or voiceless, che? How come? Because there is no vibration in the vocal cords. Good. Now, how about J? Yes. First, first, let's see the combination. This is from two voiced phonemes. De, de. Is there any vibration? De, de. Yes, you just check it. De. So it is voiced. De. And then the tip of the tongue, okay, against the alveolar ridge, okay? Now, how about je, je, the same, the front or the blade of the tongue against the palate, okay, the roof of the mouth, the palate. Now, again, we'll have Plato, alveolar, affricate, je, which is voiced. Now, what is the difference between je and je? They differ only in voicing Voicing che is voiced and je, che, very good. So che is voiceless and je voiced. Yes. Do we have all these tops in combination uh, with fricatives? All of them are affricates? No, why? We, on, we have only these 
two types of combinations in English. We might have other combinations in different languages, but here we're concerned with English, then, with English, then we have only two. You see here, church, crunch, lunch, these are examples of che, and uh, two, genes, generator, bridge, judge, and so on. Examples of the the J sound or phoneme. Now, quick review. Uh, affricates are affricates are are yes, please. Are consonant sounds? Yes. They are? Good. They start with the plosives and end with? Good. Now, how many are there in, in English? Yes, only two of them. Yes, they are. Both of them are Africans. Both of them are Plato alveolar and very good. Che is voiceless and J is um, voiced. Yes. Let's move to the third, to the third subtype, which is called nasals. Yes. First, what do we mean by nasals? Nasals or nasal sounds. Nasals or nasal sounds. Yes, please. Very good. As shown here, there are sounds made by making a complete closure in the mouth and then allowing the air to escape through the airstream coming out from the, uh, the lungs will be stopped in the mouth and then allowed to be released through the nose. In this manner of articulation, we have three phonemes, three types, uh, three sounds represented by, yes, Yes, please. N, uh, uh, M, and, and ang. Okay. Yes. M, N, and ang. Let's describe these. Yes. So M, N, and yes. First, n. If you feel your organs of speech, feel them when pronouncing the sound. N. Yes. N. Yes. What will happen? What will happen? The tip of the tongue, the tip of the tongue completely closes the mouth, the alveolar. Okay? The alveolar. This is the alveolar ridge area here. You see the tip of the tongue. Now try making it. N. Okay? N. And then the air comes out through the nose. You see? N. There is no air coming out from the mouth. Yes, it comes out. Pushed out. Goes out through the nose. So the point of constriction for this consonant is, is the tip of the tongue against the alveolar ridge, producing what is called alveolar nasal N. Now, is there any vibration? Check it. Mm. There is a huge vibration. So is it voiced or voiceless? Voiced. Now, N. 
sound in English, voiced, voiced, alveolar, nasal sound, like no, been, nine, and so on. Yes, the second one is ang. You see, ang. This might be difficult for the Arabic speaking people. Ang, because we don't have uh, such as, uh, a sound. See again. See again. Yes. How we produce it? The, pa the back of the tongue against, yes, the soft pa palate, yes, and completely close the air from going through the, uh, the mouth. It will go through the nose. Try making it. Um, you see, on the back of the tongue against the soft on, um, okay, as in the word song. Okay, song, English. Most of us say English, English, which is wrongly pronounced. It is English, English, or English. Okay, not English. There is no English. English. Okay, thank, thank. Now, we have back of the tongue against. Yes, which is in the volume or velar, on the velar, okay? Now we have the velar uh, nasal. Ang. And last one, ne. Yes, please. Yes, you see? Ne. There is a complete closure to the mouth mm, by the two, the upper and lower lip, yes. Mm, and then the air, you see this? Yes, this is here where the complete closure and then, and then the air is pushed through the nose to have bilabial, bilabial, nasal, me. Now, how about me? Is it voiced or voiceless? Me. Voiced. How about ang? So, nasal sounds and nasal phonemes of English are all voiced. Ne, ne, ang, and me. Me is produced by complete closure of the lips. Now, imagine that, imagine that one of the English-speaking individuals has no lower lip. How can, how can he pronounce me? Can he? No, he can't. Yes, with this, we close our lecture today. Thank you very much. Next time, we'll continue with the rest, okay? Thank you. Yes, you may leave.